when we left off, we're starting to talk the advanced usages of Twitter. Well, you want to tweet regularly, whatever you decide over there, based on uh, your audience and so forth, but you want to use your analytics, you want to use that screen for it to tell you this tweet seemed to have worked, this tweet seemed to have go viral, this tweet got a lot of replies, these keywords worked, this time of day worked, so your analytics will tell you how to then further succeed going forward, because you can look up plenty of articles that will tell you, don't forget to tweet every Monday morning an inspirational message. Well, that's going to work great for people that are, you know, at the office Monday morning. But my audience is not at the office. My office is at the beach. So, next is, okay, advanced. Use search. This is how we use Twitter advanced, and it sounds so basic. How to get followers via search. I'll talk about it in theory, and then we'll do it. How to get followers. Search keywords or hashtags, and I'll explain what all of those mean search keywords and hashtags to find potential followers, clients. So search keywords and hashtags to find potential followers. Search connector accounts to find their followers. Again, we'll talk in theory, then we'll do what it will we'll see what how to do it and what it means in a moment. Search to find accounts that are interacting. Okay, so in traditional marketing, a company would love to be able to know who is interested in my product, let me put a billboard in front of them. In the real world, a company would love to know at 7 p.m. my audience really cares about my product, I want to put my ad in front of them. We have the ability to do, to have that control in social media. And the thing is that what we're going to talk about here with with Twitter will apply to various degrees when we get to Facebook, when we get to Instagram, when we get to Google+. So if I don't mention every nuance and facet of search on Twitter, I'm going to come back to it when we talk about Google+, because all the networks have the search ability, and these things that we're going to talk about here will also apply for every network. So this is at least a good thing. Many of these concepts I'm talking about, we're focusing on Twitter today, but many of these concepts also apply to the other networks. You still want to use Facebook on a regular basis. You want to use uh, YouTube search. You want to do all of these things we're talking about with Twitter on all the networks with some variation. And we'll talk about those variations on the day of that network. So tangibly to do this, we're going to use the Twitter search for keywords and hashtags. A hashtag is, hashtag, it looks like this, hashtag uh, cookie fun. And then a keyword looks like this. What's the difference? A keyword does not have the hash mark, the hash symbol, the number symbol, and it has a space. So hashtag needs, <coughs> must use hash symbol, no spaces, or symbols. Is it case sensitive? Not case sensitive. Okay. Well, a question, is that keywords or keyword? Same thing, same thing. Uh, it's two literal words, but it's one keyword. Do you separate it by a comma? No, the keyword is cookie fun. That's what I'm trying to get searched by. Uh, not really the word fun or the word cookie. It's the word cookie fun. I didn't pick a very good uh, word, but it's one word, one keyword. I must use symbol, no spaces, or... Besides the hash symbol, uh, a keyword, uh, no hashtag, can use symbols, can use spaces, 
and symbols. So hash tag good hashtag bad what's the difference I didn't use spaces I use the hash symbol why is it bad Symbols. symbol the apostrophe Twitter will treat only this as the hashtag, Victor, and it'll ignore basically the rest. Here, because there's no symbol, it's grammatically wrong, but it's hashtag right. So your hashtag should not have symbols. This is a very common thing that people do. We're trying to make a hashtag with my company. We put an apostrophe S. It's our tweet, or it's our hashtag, let's say. It's wrong. It breaks. You, you don't want spaces, symbols, you don't want dashes, you don't want any special characters except the first hashtag. What's also good here is Victor's Bakery, and what's still wrong is Victor's Bakery. Lowercase, uppercase doesn't matter. I recommend uppercase letters for readability. I can read this word, and I can read this word with the capital letters. That's harder for me to see. It's starting to look like a jumbled word. So either or works. It's very, very, very common for the hashtag to be lowercase. It's not wrong to be uppercase. I recommend it because it's easier to read and understand what the hashtag is saying. Hashtag is linked to other to all other tweets. Keywords are not linked to other tweets. Hashtags are linked to all other tweets with that hashtag. A hashtag is an active, clickable link in your tweet. I'm going to tweet in a moment, uh, you know, sale this Saturday, 10% off, uh, hashtag cookie sale hash mark cookie sale, one word. So the hashtag of cookie sale can be clicked on and people will see all tweets all over Twitter that use that hashtag. Cookie, cookie treats, whatever I said. A keyword is not linked, it's just a word in your tweet. It's not linked to any other word. So the whole purpose of the hashtag is we're trying to, again, community building. A movie comes out and on the radio ad or the TV ad or the poster, at the bottom it says hashtag scary movie part 12. So everyone that is interested in that movie can look up the hashtag hashtag scary movie number one two, you know, 12. So everyone is linked together with that hashtag. It's not the same as just using a keyword. They're not linked. That's the downside. So our purpose here to find followers, we're going to search for keywords or hashtags based on topics of our business. Search a hashtag based on the topic or topics of your business. Your audience, Victor's Bakery, I'm trying to find, I'm, I sell many kinds of cupcakes, let's say, and one of the kinds of cupcakes, cupcakes that we sell is a very nice, you know, gluten-free cupcake. So if I search for the hashtag gluten-free, I'm going to find all the people that are using that keyword. I'm going to potentially find an audience that is interested in my gluten-free cupcake. So this is the big idea here. I'm going to search for keywords and topics um, of what my potential customers or clients or followers are. To actually do it, we can practice here. On your Twitter account, if you click on the top right corner, search Twitter, let's say first I will um, search a hashtag. Again, this one's graphic design. So hashtag graphic design. As I start, as you start writing a hashtag, it may recommend different hashtags. Graphic design, graphic, graphics design, graphics. I'm going to ignore those suggestions for the moment, but make a note that Twitter itself is kind of giving you suggestions about what a hashtag you may want to look at. 
It's also going to give you suggestions here of possible businesses or people that have that keyword. That keyword is either in their full name or their biography or somewhere in their account. Again, that's the reason why you want to complete your profile, put in a keyword or two, because people may find you. Victor, mm -hmm. by clicking that, I'm going to make them my followers? No. Okay. Just by clicking on their account, nothing really happens. You, you look at their account, but they don't get a notification, they don't get an invitation or anything. You just look at their account. Okay. I'm going to ignore this suggestions for the moment. I'm going to type graphic design and just press enter. I'm going to ignore the suggestions at the moment. A question? Yes. Is there like a matrix that they use to help figure out who to suggest for you? Yes, the more you use this, the network, the account, the more you tweet, the more you're active and so forth, the more it can understand and give you suggestions about what's a good hashtag, what's a good follower, what's a good keyword and such. Like, like for example, how you got the other suggestions, like the Shakti mm -hmm. graphic media. Um, like how would I, is there a way like is there a way that I should be posting so that I get recommended when somebody you know what I'm saying with somebody yeah but that that again just but but that again goes back to what, what I'm saying that I can you know one on one work with you and figure out your keywords but then your keywords don't apply to other people so the short answer is yes there is a way to do it to kind of get better suggestions and to hone in on it but it's really a one on one thing so generically for the class I just have to say use the network, try different things, post different times of day, post a poll, post a tweet, just use it and the analytics itself will start to tell you what's going to work best for you. Okay. So I search for hashtag graphic design. I get results here, top, latest, etc. The top account or tweets with that hashtag show up and top is defined in various ways. A top account here the number one result in my case of graphic design is graphic design and graphic design. R I S D G D, you know, graphic design is there. The top, they figure that out by various factors. How active are they? How many followers do they have? How many likes and replies do they have? There's some sort of algorithm that Twitter uses to determine who reaches the top. But really is about it is about how active you are, how many followers you have how famous you are. So my graphic design company might not show up there yet because I'm not active enough. I don't have enough followers. What I'm trying to show here though is going further, I'm getting then results of people or companies. So Jake, Heather Bridge, Tech Systems, Hotheads. That's really cool. Someone made a business card where then you can put together a little model plane out of it. <clears throat> Let's hire them. Well, this is the top results. If I go to latest, where whenever that hashtag has been used throughout Twitter, it's then going to appear here. 29 seconds ago, Dan posted this. Dan Daniel Scholes posted this. He made a graphic. He put hashtag minimal, hashtag abstract. He put some hashtags. He made, a, he made a design. He's trying to get his logo, his graphics out there for some purpose. I found this, this person, Daniel. Dan. Ben, building a scene in C4D. So they made this, they hashtag the graphic design. This is what I'm saying. All of those tweets that use this hashtag are linked together with this... Um, with this uh, hashtag. The purpose here then is, okay, search keywords and hashtags to find potential followers. I'm going to jump down. This asterisk will jump down here for this note. Then, when you identify potential followers, do one or more of the following. Like their tweet, reply to their tweet, retweet their tweet, follow 
their account. I said do one or more of those. Right now I've created an account. Me, I'm part of 330 million other people on Twitter. No one knows I exist. I'm trying to get hired as a graphic designer. I'm trying to sell cupcakes. No one knows I exist. If I engage in search to identify people interested in a topic, I then need to make them know I exist. If I click a like on their tweet, they get a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. If I reply, if I ask a question back to them, if I say something like, good job, if I reply to their tweet, they get a notification. Victor's Bakery replied to your tweet. If I retweet that, I'll explain retweets in a moment, they get a notification that says Victor's Bakery retweeted you. And ultimately, if I click follow on their account, it'll tell them, either on their mobile device or on the computer, it'll tell them Victor's Bakery followed you. I have made an account, I have made someone aware that I exist on Twitter. No one knows I exist. I like someone's content, they know I exist. They then, it's then up to them to decide to reciprocate or not. If I were to, with Daniel here, let's say down here, the actions are down here. Comment or reply on their tweet like their tweet, retweet. Uh, if I were to simply like, Dan got a notification on his Twitter screen. Up on that notification screen, I already had a one there. It's not, it's not the same. But Dan got a notification. VMC Inc. liked your tweet. They can then say, who's VMC Inc.? They click on my link, they go back to the profile of VMC Inc., they read what they're about, they decide to follow or not. They decide to like a tweet or not. They decide to reciprocate or not. But this is sort of, if you want to give an analog to the real world, this is cold calling. I call people, I'm a realtor, I'm going to call people randomly in the real world. 20 people will say, no, thank you, I don't need to buy a house. One person says, yes, let's talk about buying a house. That was a success. You know, one divided by 20, that's what, what is that, you know, 1%, whatever. So, 5%, that's why I'm not a math major. So, uh, this is cold calling. I'm tweeting, I'm interacting, that is, with people that might be interested in my business. And you're going to get that result that most people are just going to move on with their life. Thank you, I'm moving on. But it does. It costs nothing except your time to do this. You're searching, you're finding people, I'm going to like that. Brian got a notification. Lauren, they click on that one, Lauren got a notification. They may then follow through, they may not. The next level up, I put these in a specific order of value. The like is the lowest value of what you can do. It's not the worst, it's just the lowest value. The worst is you do nothing. A like is the lowest value. The next level up is that reply. You ask a question, you, you start a conversation, you um, become social on social media. As I've been talking, more tweets have appeared with the hashtag graphic design. So we have four design, we have Kevin, five things every creative needs to know about print design. Holiday, new header of Gal Gadot. So let's say here. Okay, to Holiday, I'm going to reply. That's a little comment icon. Google sees that. First, holiday sees it because I'm sending it basically directly to them and then anyone would see that that if they go to my account they would see everything that I've tweeted so basically all of this is public unless I change it so if I reply here I could reply with simply saying great job but the problem here is this is a dead end they may reply with thank you a more open-ended reply is, great job, how did you make it? 
I'm interacting. It's open-ended. I'm asking a question. Hopefully, Holiday replies to keep the interaction going. If they don't, that's okay. I'm going to be interacting with other people, other accounts. So yeah, I'm tweeting to some random person on the internet. That's cold calling in the real world. And for both, I need a certain amount of bravery. But on the internet here, it's a little easier to do, but still, you're reaching to a person or an organization or something or someone that might be interested in your product or hiring you or whatever. Question? They would see, um, they could see, yes, when someone follows you, they will most likely just see the tweets you've put out to everyone in the public. But a person can come to your account and see what are the tweets and replies that they've made to people. And they can see what you've tweeted. So it's not that you can only send a tweet to only certain people. It is very public, although by default people will just see the sort of like global tweets. Can they see your comments? Yeah, the comment is the reply, so they would see it right here under reply. They call it replies, but it would be the comment. They haven't changed it yet. The icon used to be a slightly different icon that looked like a reply. Now it looks like a conversation. So most likely, eventually, they'll change that to say tweets and conversations. So here, I have the ability to also attach a picture, a fun animation, a poll, a link, etc. Well, this is cold calling in the real world. And... Uh, here I'm interacting. It's the next level up. So I will reply. Holiday got a notification. Hopefully the result of that is that I get replies. Better yet, I get follows. Because what I'm giving here, I want to get back as well. I'm going to give these because I want to get these back. So if I put them in this sort of order, the most important one is I want to get follow backs. I want to get followed as well to build an audience. I'll get to the number four in a moment, but I want to get these. A retweet is basically going viral. I see someone's tweet, I like it, I want to retweet it, I want to share it, I want to forward it to more people. I'm forwarding it to my followers. So a few more appeared here. If I see um, the holiday posted another one, okay, Alex. Alex posted a picture. Here's an example where the picture did not come through. It kind of looks like a boring tweet. It would have been nice if I could see the picture, but it wasn't set up right and it didn't show the picture. But let's say it showed a picture. So Alex, let's say I like the picture so much, I click that second icon, which is the retweet or the share. I'm forwarding it to my followers. This account has a hundred followers. So I'm basically sort of copying and pasting Alex's tweet so that my followers can see it. So well, what's the value of that? Again, I'm trying to get these back, but I don't get I don't get unless I give. Social media is a lot about reciprocity. I get what I give. So if I am giving retweets, I may get a retweet. If I retweet Alex, <coughs> they get a notification. VMC Inc. retweeted you. Uh, Alex may then check out my profile. Who's VMC Inc.? Oh, it seems interesting. Let me retweet something of theirs. Better yet, let me follow. That's the fourth one. The fourth one is when you hover your mouse over one of these accounts, you will see their biography, their graphics and all of that, their stats. Follow. You can, of course, unfollow later, but you can follow an account and unfollow whenever you want. Are they, are they notified that you unfollow them? Not that they're unfollowed, no. My friend told me she had an app that would follow that. Uh, those apps work in a rather clandestine way to tell you that, but the default is no one knows when you get unfollowed. Okay, okay so your task as an advanced Twitter user is you want to do this. Obviously, this takes a lot of work. I have to search for these hashtags or keywords. I have to find people. I interact with them. I be social on a social network in the hopes that I get the, these back as well in this order. Meaning, I would. Uh, it's great that my tweets get liked, but 
in our short attention span culture a like is gone so fast. I tweeted something, someone clicked like, they moved on. What's next? What else is there to look at? Okay, the next level up of a reply is a little bit more valuable to my company, my Twitter account, because someone took the time and effort to write something. Hopefully something like, great job, where do I buy it, what are your ingredients, do you have any discounts? Then I'm, it's showing that that person's a little bit more serious than I like. The next level up is the retweet. I want that because let's say I've got five followers on Twitter and I tweet something. Sale this Saturday. One of my followers retweets that tweet. They saw my tweet, they liked it enough to retweet, and they have a thousand followers. My tweet reached 1,005 followers. The original five that I had and the friends of friends. So I want to get retweets. I want it to go viral because then maybe one of those that that 1,000 person has, they have 10,000 followers, and that goes after the person of 10,000 followers. I reached 10,000, I reached 11,005 people from my original five followers. Again, easier said than done, because that depends on a great photo, a great link, a good product, a good verbiage, you know. It's still up to you to create content that will get this. You will not simply get this because you retweet every account that you see. Although the numbers game does show you will get some result of that. It is better to create content that gets a reaction. Didn't I say that earlier here? Create content that is going to get reactions. Create content that people will want to retweet, will want to reply to. And ultimately, you're creating an account on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on YouTube that will get follows. You know, an account that is completely self-aggrandizing or navel-gazing is great for you. You know, I'm very creative, I'm going to write a lot, but I want people to read it. I'm going to try to create content that will help, that will get results, follows and such. It's not all about just, well, if they don't get it, they don't get it. I'm an artiste. No, you want to try to create content that will help you get found. So you want to do all of these. This is that first part over here. Let's look at these other two. Yes? I just noticed that um, whereas up in search Twitter we put the hashtag and, well, we put a hashtag and we use hashtag graphic design, these uh, tweets have the symbol at sign in front of the name of the business. So where does that at sign come? <clears throat> That's getting a little closer to what I'm going to say over here, oh, okay. but the hash, uh, that at symbol is the name of the account. In this, in this case over here, let's see if I can bring it back. Um, here, uh, Holiday tweeted out this photo of the actress. She tweeted it out to Twitter, but technically she also directed it toward the actress, Gal Gadot. Her tweet is being sent to all of Twitter, but also being sent to the actress. She's got a million followers, so she may not notice that yet another person is tweeting <laughs> at her. But the at symbol means I'm directing this tweet to one or more people on Twitter. That's a little advance that we'll get to in a moment. But Holiday is trying to get this picture to show up for more people. So she says, let me show this picture of the actress to the actress. Maybe the actress will like it and retweet me and reach one million people. So we're going to do a variation of that in a moment. But that at symbol, is, is that, that, that's what that means. You're trying to reach more people directly. Uh, so the, the second uh, tactic here of advanced, using search. OK. Um, search connector accounts to find their followers. OK. So we can look at Twitter. By default, uh, m many things about it are public. This is how you can do competitor analysis, also known as reconnaissance, also known as spying. We can go look at the competition. So let's say Victor's Bakery, I'm going to search hashtag vegan cookies. I sell vegan cookies in Victor's Bakery. So I'll, I can find people that are interested in vegan cookies by searching hashtag vegan cookies. I'm also going to find companies, competitors. So if I search a hashtag, a keyword of my business, 
I'm going to see top latest people. If I go with people, this is going to start to show me accounts with some of those hashtags or keywords. So I see vegan recipes. I won't follow, I won't let them know that I'm reconnoiting them, that I'm spying on them. I'm going to click on their account. That doesn't trigger any notification if you look at any account. I'm seeing, what are they tweeting? They haven't been active. They gave up on Twitter in 2010. But let's say they were active. I would see all the tweets that they're making. If they've got a lot of followers, this is a way for me to figure out what's working for them, which may work for me. Before they gave up on Twitter, they had 138 followers. You can click on any account to see their followers, and in theory, these accounts are of people and businesses interested on a topic so much that they followed that account. My account is also about cookies and recipes and vegan food and such. Uh, Petition Sister, Alina, Victoria, Michael, all of, these all of these people and companies are interested in what I sell, what I'm about. I then, when I identify the people, this is the connector account, once I identify the people, I can then do the tactics again, like reply, retweet, follow the accounts that are connecting to following the connector account. So I'm seeing this is like if I if I was on a if, if I was on Main Street and two blocks over was my competition and I then stand in front of their door and watch all the people walk into their business and then I tell those people, hey, why don't you come to my business instead? But here we're doing it in a digital way. Yes. Can I tweet to all those at once? No. Not exactly. There is no button to say click to all of them at once because click, t tweeting to 138 people, too many. And this is a way for Twitter to prevent the spam because we saw that actress had a million followers. Twitter is not going to let me tweet to one million people at once because the spammers are going to abuse this. The hackers are going to abuse this. So you would have to tweet to them basically individually. Well, would I send a message to each one then? Well, the same thing, tweeting or sending a private message, but you'd have to do it to all of them individually, individually. basically. Mm -hmm. So the tactic here. Uh, search the term, like I have listed here. Search to find accounts that have followers, and then click to view their followers. their profile. They are not alerted. Search for accounts, view their profile, view their followers, steal their followers. No, interact with their followers. And the interaction again is going to go back to these actions over and over. A very, uh, yes, go ahead. Um, you know you were talking about that analyticleader.com? Mm -hmm. So can you find out what your competition, can you find out about your competition through that? No, this analytics.twitter is just for your stats. Okay, good. Yes? Getting back to tweeting the individual followers of a competitor. Mm -hmm. That will appear on your on your profile. Profile. Yes. Each one of these separately. Yes. So here, Victoria, um, there's a button uh, tweet to Victoria. So yes, as I tweet to any account, not just my, not just the other followers, as I tweet to anyone on Twitter, my followers could see that if they choose to. To do that. The default, they will only see the global tweets that I tweet to everyone, but they go to that screen and they will see everything tweeted to individual accounts. See how that one did not show up 
here until a person had to go to let me see all replies. So quick question, could you essentially tweet to multiple people? No, or like if you were to copy and paste their at symbol at? I know people have done that to me, not so much as Twitter, but other accounts. That is one sort of way, uh, you know, the question earlier about tweeting to everyone at once. There's no button that lets you tweet to everyone at once. But you can, with extra effort, copy and paste 20 people's addresses to tweet to 20 people. But to, to copy and paste 138 people's addresses, that is not feasible. So you could tweet to more than one, but you have to do the extra effort of selecting more than one address, more than one account. They don't want to feel spammed. But. Exactly. At a certain point, it's too much uh, regarding hashtags and replies. So um, let me mention one more thing up on the advanced section is here. Uh, limit. Well, we're searching for hashtags. I haven't got to the part about you can add hashtags to your tweets. I'll get back to that. But before that, I'll say limit hashtags on your own tweets. one to three. More than three hashtags, you're starting to look like a spammer. You're trying to put too many keywords in your tweets. You're trying to reach too many people. In the real world, that would be, again, like, well, I'm a realty, real, realtor, so I'm going to go to some sort of mixer where people are interested in realty. But then I'm also going to go to a mixer that people are interested in finance and another mixer that's interested in something else. You know, going to trying to reach too many people dilutes your message. Uh, that's the balancing act, another balancing act here. If, if one hashtag is enough for your tweet, it's enough. You don't want to put seven hashtags. You think if one ta hashtag is good, seven is sen seven times better. No, at a certain point you look like a spammer. You look fake. You look like you're just trying to get as many people as possible without real doing it the right way. Yes? Getting back to bakeries, so all you wanted was San Diego bakeries. Mm. How would you send a tweet to San Diego bakeries? Sending the tweet, I'm st I still haven't gotten quite to the details of that part about targeting your tweet, okay. so we'll get back to that. Sure. Yes? I'm interested on keywords. If they're looking, um, if, there's, if someone's searching for keywords, are they finding them just on my bio? It's going to be found, so these keywords and hashtags and such are going to be found in the link, the, your, your username of your account, and the bio, and the tweets that you publish. Yeah. So you have a limited space here, so I'm not going to put 50 hashtags, but I'm going to be tweeting once a week, and that's going to create more content and more findable tweets. Okay, so competitor analysis. That's what I'm doing here. I'm looking at other accounts based on topics of what my account is. I'm looking at their followers. You can also look at who they are following. That has some value. Vegan Recipes was following six accounts. I can go look at that. And for some reason, well, okay, they, they followed hockey writers, Kurt Visek, Michelle, David McMillan. These are more people that I can also further go and try to interact with them. I can go over to, well, these are pretty dumb accounts, but I can go to Garrett. I can go to Garrett's account, like a tweet from them, reply to a tweet of them, retweet their tweet to make Garrett know I exist. Now this doesn't really seem to be someone interested in my kind of business. They seem to be some sort of motivational speaker and such. But you never know. It doesn't cost much to take a moment to reply and say, hey, that's a great link. Thank you for sharing. And maybe they will reply back and say, you're welcome. Or maybe they will follow you. Or maybe they will reply to you. You don't know. But the more active you are, the more possibility of impressions and conversions, followers.
I have here the fourth action of follow as the last one because that's the one of last resort, meaning I do not recommend that you simply go on a follow frenzy. I don't recommend you search for the hashtag San Diego Real Estate and follow every account that is mentioning San Diego Real Estate. I don't recommend that because choosing for you to follow an account means you want to see all of their tweets. So when you go to your home screen on Twitter, you're going to see all of the tweets of everyone you have followed. And if they are mostly tweeting about weird or controversial or upsetting things, you're going to see that because you've chosen to follow that account. Like that. There's SpongeBob SquarePants in the real world. Disturbing images of how SpongeBob would look as a human. So, when you choose to follow uh, an account, you will see their tweets. That's why it's the fourth action. You don't simply want to follow, follow, follow everything. You're going to see a lot of things you might not be interested in. That person happened to tweet about cookies that time, but 90% of the time they're tweeting offensive political things. I don't know. So, be sparing with the follows. Yes? My daughter told me that the more followers I have, or the more followers I have, then followers, the worse it is. To some degree, yes. So the question here is, okay, I'm going to follow a hundred accounts, and I have two followers. That is a little bad in terms of, you know, you're following a lot, but you're, it doesn't seem to be that your account is valuable enough for you to get a follow back. So you want to hopefully be an account where the ratio is like this. You are following some accounts and you have more followers than following. One hallmark of a spam account is an account that follows a thousand accounts because they're trying to just build followers, build followers. So I personally, uh, for myself or clients, try to have less following than followers. Uh, so this one's 45 to 101. If I have, you know, 99 following, 100 followers, fine. If I've got 105 following, 100 followers, that's fine. If I've got 500 following and 100 followers, that's not so good. It shows to other people that this account is more about just following. It doesn't really have good content. Why would I follow them? They seem a little spammy. You know, everyone's going to decide on their own to click follow, sure, but when you've got a lot, when that ratio is kind of skewed in that way, that's one indicator to people, it might not be a great account to follow. So I agree with I follow a bunch of people and then I unfollow them if I have like an hour, like I followed like a week later or a couple days later. Mm -hmm. so you have like 300 uh, people and you got 10 and then follow like 300 and then delete. That's a great idea that no spammer has ever thought of. Really? Nope. You're lying. Dude. Exactly. I'm being sarcastic. So what's happening is <laughs> what's happening is that's a good idea, but the spammers already figured it out. Therefore, Twitter actually doesn't like us to do that. So that is a tactic that real regular people us think to do, but don't do it because Twitter sees that as a spam tactic. I may follow a hundred accounts and then unfollow them next week. Twitter's going to pick up on that pattern and then start to flag your account and then maybe call you out on it. So I would be careful about that. It is okay well, to they, follow. They get the bottom of their matrix. Like, I feel like that's a good yeah. punishment. Yeah, you'll get, you'll get some sort of punishment that you won't be as visible and such. So I'd be careful about following 50 accounts and then unfollowing them tomorrow or next week or whatever. You know, Try these other tactics a little bit more than just follow. Yes? I, I couldn't hear what the original thing was, but what's it? Which was, uh, what if I follow 50 accounts today and 50 more tomorrow, and then I unfollow them next week? You know, just following accounts and then unfollowing them eventually, that's not a good tactic to do. You want some of these other more organic, honest ways. Yes? What about when you get started? Because that, you had 150, but that's, you've been on it for a while. Yes, exactly. I would be, I'd still be careful. Uh, I believe there is a limit of like 200 per day. You can follow 200 and then tomorrow 200 more. But Twitter, because of the rampant abuse on social media, these networks are often more in terms about guilty until proven innocent. 
shoot first, ask questions later. If you're starting to engage in behavior that looks like a spammer, you're going to get labeled as a spammer and penalized in the system, which might be harder to get out of. So I would be careful, even as a beginner, to just follow a lot. That's why I have these other tactics. You're not going to get penalized, really, by liking a lot of people's stuff, replying and retweeting. The, the abuse of following accounts, that one is definitely the one to watch out for. I was talking about Instagram from my experience. Not from, not from All the networks have some amount of that. Yeah. Yeah. I know they do. I haven't really, I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. I've never liked It's all at work, it's not really working. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see, we've got the third point. Search accounts to find accounts that are interacting. This one's another layer to that. Search a famous account. See their tweets, see who is interacting with the tweet. And I'll do it in a moment, but this is related to this connector. Um, people think, okay, if I interact with some of these accounts, some of them will follow me back. You're not going to get a follow back from Amazon. You're not going to get a follow back from Nike. You're not going to get a follow back from these companies. But what you can do is you can see what Nike has tweeted. You can see what McDonald's has tweeted. You can see everyone's public tweets. Then you can see on the tweet who has replied to that tweet, who has liked that tweet, who has retweeted that tweet. And I can see those people. And those people most likely then can follow me, can reply to me, can interact with me. So just as an example, I don't, I don't even have to search it, but just as an example, I'm going to go look at twitter.com slash McDonald's. <clears throat> they have three and a half million followers. People want to pay attention, especially to a Rolo McFlurry. So they've got an account, three and a half million followers. They tweet this stuff. Here's a video. Later over here, here's another video. Over here, here's a picture. Here's another video. Here's another picture. Picture. Video. So these big companies, even if you never want to set foot in any of these businesses, check out what they're doing to see what is valuable to them. And the value is below each of their posts, their tweets, stats. This is like publicly visible. 28 replies. 68 retweets, 322 likes. This one up here, 395. Up here, 452. Okay, so I'm looking at an account that then I can start to interact with. Hello, this is still the social media class. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I can do here is start to see who are these people. If you click at, on the time, the date and time on a tweet, you can focus on the tweet to see this, these stats in detail. This one was published on June 8, 3.03 p.m. If you click on someone's tweet, the time at the top there, it shows you that. And they use these hashtag, National Best Friends Day, hashtag McFlurry, hashtag hack. If you scroll down, you're going to then start to see the uh, the replies first. So B-roll, B-roll, Yayo replied with that, Chuck Cannon replied with that, Emily replied with that, Morgan replied with that. These are the people you want to target, not McDonald's. They're never going to reply to you, most likely. They're not going to follow you. These big companies, they depending on the company, they, not, they might not interact with you much. You are going to interact with those that are interacting you are going to interact with those that are active. Again, competitor analysis, reconnaissance, you're seeing who's active. So if someone is interested, okay, 
looking good. So Aunt Annie says, looking good. Let's say I'm a bakery, uh, or I'm a cafe or a deli or something, and I have a version of that. We sell our own thing like that. Aunt Annie is saying, looks good. So I, at this point, can, re can give a like. Aunt Annie will get a notification. Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. It may end there. They may then like my tweet. I can reply. They get that notification. They then may reply to some of my tweets or continue this tweet to reply. Okay, good. I can give a retweet. Again, I want these things. I may get these things when I give these things. I may then choose to follow. But again, be careful about the follow because they may have tweeted something on topic at the moment and every other time they're talking about other things that, it, that might not be valuable to my business or things that I want to see. So, again, lots of effort, but this is the job of a, of a social media manager. I said I teach this stuff, but I'm also part of a business that we do this stuff for clients. And this is part of what we do for a client. They hire us, we drop the contract, we settle on payment and all of that. We tweet on behalf of the client, but we also do this community building stuff. We reply to people, we uh, follow people, we answer questions, all of that, community building. Because eventually on the account here, we're going to tweet, sale this Saturday, use this coupon. And as we've built that audience, 10 followers, 100 followers, 1,000 followers, 1% 1 of that is a sale. So if I have 100 followers, 1% 1 is one sale. If I have 1,000 followers, 10 sales. Again, I'm being very pessimistic of 1%. You may have an amazing account and your CTR is 58%. Even if I've got 12 followers, what's 50% of 12? Six sales, which may be good, which may be bad. Yes? Uh, right there where you're at, your um, likes and your tweets, mm -hmm. how far back does it go with numbers? Like, is it like the last day? No, this is from the beginning. From the beginning. From the creation of the account, yeah. This is a different kind of likes. This is how many likes this account has given. This is not the number of likes this account has gotten. Okay. You'll see that over on your analytics. Okay, and the same with the tweets. It's how many you Made. sent messages. How many I've published, which yeah. does count global tweets and tweets to people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes? No, this isn't like on the menu, so I'll remember. No, it's like a random person can have it there. Well, it would be weird if it was a personal account, but we're thinking about it always in terms of business accounts. So, I would try to drop that attitude as soon as possible. It's not <laughs> It's not weird. This is a potential customer. Now, if the person replies with something sarcastic or mean or that thing, okay, yes, definitely like that. Obviously, that person said, no, I don't want that junk. <laughs> okay, so, but I'm going to I'm gonna ignore this person. And you can go to the person's account and click block. And he did, he did that because he wants, because so many followers, like 26,000 followers. So maybe he just does it for attention, like you were saying? No, he's only got 500 followers. Oh, he's got 26,000 tweets. tweets. Yeah, yeah, he could be doing this for, for attention. I saw this. I might think it's funny. I might do a like. Two other people gave him a like. So people use Twitter in a variety of ways. One is to get that fleeting internet fame. So some people are just going to be sarcastic, especially to the big accounts, and just be sarcastic. And someone's going to say, that's funny, and they'll give him a like, and they feel good. So for a this is the good and the bad, the double-edged sword of all the social networks. You are putting yourself out to a very public medium that nowadays we're seeing people are getting very sarcastic, very mean, very whatever. And the big companies suffer that a lot. Us smaller companies, hopefully we don't suffer that. But we have the ability, when mean people start to annoy us, we have these options next to their account to report them, to block them, to mute them, etc to try to keep it civil. We're not going to be able to delete their tweet. It's on their account. 
but we're going to block it so that we don't see it, so that it doesn't affect our tweet. If we block it, then people that are at our account won't see it either? No, it's just that our account won't see that tweet. We're not able to block that tweet from other people seeing it. There's no way to do that. Really? So where it says tweets and replies in my, mm -hmm. my account, if there's a reply that I want to block... These are only else? your replies. Huh? These are only your replies. These are not the replies that the other people made to your tweets. Tweets, tweets, right? tweets and replies are what you have tweeted and replied to people. These are not the replies of everyone that has replied to your tweet. Uh, um, Question. Um, so say, I know like with Facebook, for example, if I don't like what someone's saying, I can delete their, I can delete their comment off my post. No, unfortunately. On no, unfortunately on Twitter, one of the reasons I really like Facebook compared to Twitter is that you can control your message a lot more. You can remove anyone's weird messages on your Facebook. Facebook. On Twitter, you cannot remove anyone's tweets. You can only block them and move on. You can report them, and maybe that account will get shut down if it gets enough heat. But no one, you cannot remove anyone else's tweet attached to your tweet. So when you block them, you can't see theirs, and they can't see your stuff anymore. Exactly. Okay. So. You can't delete. So that tweet you posted. 34 minutes ago, can you delete the whole thread? Oh, on that, yes. On your own tweets that you start, you can go and then to the options of your tweet and delete your tweet. So if you started a tweet and 50 people replied with mean things, if you delete your original tweet, then that deletes the connection of the thread, yes. Okay. And all else fails. Yes. Um, so say you like block someone and then that person is following somebody that also follows me and they retweet something of mine. The person I block, can they see any retweets? No, I don't believe so. Uh, when you block an account, they should not be able to see anything about your they account. Any of my content. Exactly, okay. even if someone retweeted it, because it comes from your original account, so they should not be able to see it. Does that apply with Facebook as well? Facebook has a kind of different nuances, but yes. Basically, yes, when you do these blocks, it blocks people. But at least Facebook, when we get to it, will be better because we can remove the negativity if we want. Search famous accounts, see their tweets, see who is interacting with the tweets. So um, reach out to accounts of competitors, interact with those are uh, tweeting. So I looked at McDonald's, I saw someone that said, that looks tasty. Well, I'm going to tweet directly to them. I'm just going to click the little reply button to them. Let's see if I still have it up there. Right here, looking good. So if I were to click that reply or conversation, it says, you're replying to Auntie Annie and McDonald's. So if I were to say something here like, yeah, McDonald's is terrible. Here's our better one. Technically, I'm sending this tweet both to Andrea and McDonald's. The way to fix that is you click there and say, I'm only sending this to Auntie, not McDonald's. So when I'm part of a thread, the default is that. Let me show that again. If I'm replying to Julia, and I click here, it says, you're replying to Julia, actually, to Julia and McDonald and Goodwill Hunter. They had been part of another conversation with other people. So if I do a reply now without paying attention here, I'm sending my tweet basically to all these people at once. So you would need to click on the link there to say, OK, I really only want to send this to Julia. I don't want McDonald's to see this. I don't even know who Will Hunter is. You could keep them in on the conversation or not. It's often safer just to remove the people, the others in the conversation. Now you have a button right there, others in Convo. Just remove that. I'm going to recommend it's safer when you reply in a conversation. Just remove everyone except that one person. So when replying in a conversation, Remove 
remove all but the original tweeter. Because I may be bad mouthing the competition, you know, the other competitor down the street. If I don't remove them, they will get a notification that says Victor's Bakery replied. They read that and they say, oh, look at this mean person down the street. I'm going to block them. And then I can't see their, their, their content. So you see here it's pretty involved. These topics that we're talking, these tactics that we're talking about here will apply in Facebook when we do that in two weeks. We'll apply in Google Plus when we do it next week. We'll apply on Instagram with variations. We're going to wind down the lecture because the class is itching to get in. And we're going to have a little lab time, a little open time until 1, but we've got to be out by 1. These notes, I'm going to put them into the network folder. I'll turn the printer on if you want to print, but again, mind the time. There's a class coming in. General questions. I know I didn't cover everything, but we're going to cover it in different days too. But general questions today. Yes? So, in general, you're talking a bit about their length tweets, mm -hmm. being interactive. There's a response to me. Mm -hmm. It might spit out a still. Is that good in the effort? I would, because it is somewhat of a numbers game. The more you are active, the more that percentage, you know, that single digit CTR, 5%, 2%, 9%. The more you're active, eventually you will get more results. So, you know, how long have you not gotten results? One week? That's not enough. Two months? Maybe. Maybe it is trying to do a different sort of tactic, but that's the big idea. Just be active. All right, so that's it for the moment. I'm going to put the notes in the folder. We'll do it again next Friday.